right, what's up everybody? Welcome to a uh, today's edition of Rare Plant Talk with Teray. This is going to be kind of a special edition because I'm going to do something for the first time. Uh, we're going to do a unboxing from one of the suppliers that we go through. Uh, we go through about three different suppliers, two, well, about four different suppliers, honestly. Uh, three of which are Indonesia, and we have another supplier in Thailand that we work with. And these are suppliers that have been vetted out. They have a good relationship with us. We work closely with them. And so we uh, tend to order a large quantity of supplies or uh, we, I'm calling them supplies, but they're really plants, but plants are supplies when you have a plant store. Um, <clears throat> but we, we try to order a pretty large order of plants each time around. And so uh, it's important that we work with individuals that we have a good relationship with and that are very trustworthy and so we can uh, continue to bring you the plants that you typically probably couldn't afford uh, but are plants that are rarer than what you're probably going to find uh, in our local area anyways and and it's kind of it kind of goes back to or a good segue or sediment to that i guess is in the last plant swap that we were just in um one of the individuals that were at our station was like man you guys always have the good rare stuff and i was like you know what that's that's the goal you know our goal is to bring you the plants that nobody else is going to carry um at a price that nobody else is going to beat and and that's that's really what it's going to be about for us and that's our niche in this market and so uh we certainly appreciate those of you that um, have and will continue to support us through this process of opening up the stair the store armstrong aeroids and uh, i just want to say thank you to you as we jump into what we have in this box here so <clears throat> the box is well packaged uh, I'm not going to expose any of my personal information again this time on it, uh, but uh, let's let's jump into it. Let's see let's see what's going on in here. All right, so got our little handy tool, and I don't know which side is right side up, so this might be a bit of a process. So I'm going to start by finding a crease, and then let's see. Let's adjust this. Oh, shh. There we go. I'm gonna start by finding a crease and then just kind of trying to navigate my way through the tape. <clears throat> so as I'm navigating my way through this tape and figuring out which side is right side up for this particular box, which it should be this way because that's what the labels would allude to, um, <clears throat> I wanna talk about the difference between some of the things that you're going to find from potential plant sellers either online maybe even sometimes in person that i think is really important and it's been talked about a bit but i hadn't really heard the term or the terminology that was used recently um and i, I really like i like the the way it was phrased i don't know maybe because i'm kind of into like um you know, Adrena Gaines and how they do the house renovations and stuff like that. And then there's that show, Flip or Flop. I'll be honest, did not care for that show, but um, it brings us one step closer to what I want to talk about as I segue into what I'm really trying to say. <clears throat> there's two types of rare plant sellers. There's, well, actually, there's probably three. Um, yeah, so there's the ones that have the plants they grow the mother plant and they sell you a clipping of that mother plant or they have a plant that they have matured from a mother plant and they sell you that plant and so there's that type of individual or sell seller at home and then the second kind is uh one where i believe that armstrong airways is really going to fit more into in terms of a niche and sorry about the noise as I'm cutting this box open but um, the second kind is one where they will buy the plants overseas import that plant assume the risk of the import process because as you probably know or have seen in previous videos 
Uh, there is a lot of risk in terms of plants dying, plants being seized, you know, just different types of... Well, I'm going to do this real fast. Maybe not real fast. I'm just going to do this. Sorry, one second. different types of things that you can encounter um, during the import process and so what my goal as a seller is to do is two things one is assume that risk uh, uh, also fraudulent because there's, there's also fraudulent people out there that will just take your money in or take your money and sell you what you thought you were getting and you weren't getting but um, I, I like to think of myself as the one that assumes that risk and takes on that side of the things as far as the transaction goes in the overseas interaction works with negotiates vets out the supplier and then receives those plants and then the second part which is the important part is um, we will you know we'll rejuvenate or bring those plants back to life if you will because a lot of times when a plant um, gets shipped overseas it goes through a lot and I, I talk about it in depth in another video so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it but it goes through a cleansing process it goes through being shipped in a box with crazy different climates that take place within the box you know very um, drastic temperature changes drastic changes in uh, humidity and being, you know, just the whole the selection where it has to sit there while it's going through the phytosanitary process. Uh, there's just a lot that it, that it goes through. And so by the time they get here, they're either stressed or will lose their roots or will have bad roots or they will have died. And so we reacclimate those plants, bring them back into a condition that is going to make them healthy and suitable and uh where they'll live once they end up in your home. So by the time you get it, you now get a once again healthy plant. So that's the second type. Now, the third type is one that I would be very cautious about and, and I would try to avoid this if at all possible. The third type is the person that goes through the first part, such as what I explained. You know, they do the overseas transaction, they buy a bunch of plants, and then they get those plants in house and then they turn around and they sell them to you before acclimating them before rerouting them and they might make them look pretty they might sell them in a condition that looks really good at first because sometimes the stress doesn't show up in the leaves until you know a week down the road and i hate to keep bringing this back up but my tie was a perfect example the leaf looked great and i went and i i just touched it and the whole leaf fell off because the root system was gone um, and in that particular situation, it was no fault of the seller. It just happened to be that that was the case, you know, and, and we knew that that was a potential, um, casualty that we could incur and, and we did, uh, but all of the others were, were really good. So kudos to you, um, supplier, but, um, so that third seller, you really want to avoid that because that's going to give that's going to do two things. One, it's going to give the import process a bad name. It's like, oh man, imported plants are terrible. No, they're not terrible. There's just a lot of work that has to go into that plant before they're ready to go into your home, provided that plant makes it and survives the, the import process. And then the other piece is that it it puts you in a position where you're like, oh man, I tried to I tried to I tried to take care of this plant and for whatever reason it just died on me. Well, it, yes, it died on you, but it didn't die because of anything that you did. It died because whoever received that plant and imported that plant didn't properly care for that plant in order to get it rejuvenated, brought back to being healthy, and rerouted so that by the time that you re did receive it, you received a nice, healthy, successful plant. Um, also kind of uh, what ties to why I try to have as many of my containers as possible as a clear container so that, you know, obviously this is just an empty container with nothing in it, but it's a good demonstration because it has really the two components that I usually have in my setup, which is one, you've got a 
medium that the roots will grow in. In this case, it's a soilless, um, I, don't know, I, I like to call it a soilless soil because it looks so much like soil, but it's really not soil. It's just a bunch of other stuff in there um, that looks like soil, like uh, cocoa peat and pumice and oh, worm castings and bark and stuff like that. But anyways, side topic. And then you've got like little reservoir down here that's usually contained with LECA so that you can have uh, a water reservoir. But um, <clears throat> as you would see, the important part, I guess, to this is that you would see the root system growing in this plant. And so you're, you're not going to have to worry about that. And I think that that's an important thing is if you're going to buy a plant, I either A, want you to see the root system, or B, if you don't see the root system, I'm going to share with you directly what my thoughts are in regards to that, or we'll open it up and take a look, you know. Um, some people are willing to take the risk where they have good experience and they know how to root a plant, and they're, they're ones that are like, you know what, I, I understand what I'm getting, and I will buy it. But that's where the difference is, is they're buying something where they understand what they're getting, and they know what to do, versus getting a plant where they receive that plant, and it looks like this, and they're like, oh yeah, this plant is in fairly good condition, it looks okay, but there's no telling of the root system. Actually, maybe that is right there. Is that a root? Let me take a look. No, oh, it's not. But there's no telling of the root system, and but they try to sell you that plant. This is a plant where, honestly, well, hey, this particular plant's just not for sale, which is why it's here and not in the store, because it's simply not ready because of the fact that I can't see the root system and because of the fact that the leaves are still seeming to struggle a little bit. But they'll try and sell you that as a healthy plant, and then it's going to die. And then you're going to think, man, I, I just don't know how to take care of this type of plant, when that's maybe not necessarily the case. All right, so enough of that soapbox. There's uh, three different types. Two are good. One is bad. Please avoid those that are flipping plants, which is the whole scope of why I started out with um, Joanna Gaines and flipping houses and whatnot. But um, they're, and Kaylee Ellen called them plant flippers. Maybe it's what they call them in the industry, I don't know. But avoid plant flippers because they're going to set you up to fail and make those that either grow the plant themselves or those that reacclimate and climatize the plant. Uh, a bad name and so we, we want to avoid those types of individuals okay so let's uh, I think we're right side up here let's see what we got <clears throat> open this up and wow Got a box within a box, and then this isn't a box, but I will say that this is very well packed, which I do certainly appreciate, obviously. And that's the other thing is a good supplier is going to acknowledge the climate or the variation of climates that your plant is going to go through and they'll A, ask you and then B, pack accordingly. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly sharing all of this with you guys uh, in part because I know that there's still a large segment of the population that wants to buy plants from overseas and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but it's it's nice to be able to do so from an educated perspective and i see that there's there's a lot of unboxing videos and a lot of them are actually pretty good and they share um some good content but um since i'm doing it now i figured hey and we're starting this new um i guess we'll call it content we'll uh I want to be able to go through that process with you on camera and just kind of talk through what my thoughts are. All right, so now this is the part that's always scary because imported plants are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Hopefully that line is not...
copywritten. Of course it can't be because I altered it. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna look at the root system just yet. I'm just gonna open these up. We'll take a quick look and then we'll move on to the next one. I'm gonna try and find a fast and efficient way to get these open, but I wanna do it in a way that's gonna still be very caring to the plant. <clears throat> well, this is exciting. So we've got a, the bending on it is a little bit, uh, it's not so bad. I mean, obviously it's gonna it's gonna come back, but the condition of the plant is amazing. So we've got a Florida ghost here. Some would call it a Florida ghost mint. Some would just call it a Florida ghost. I will say this, and, and I, I've heard that argument, and I've heard both sides of that argument. And two things: one, we have a Florida ghost. I have no idea where it's at right now, but um, and and I have had a Florida ghost mint. And they were not titled Florida Ghost. Well, the one was titled Florida Ghost and the other one was titled Florida Ghost Mint. So my wife's, which was the Florida Ghost, it didn't start out with this mint type um, coloration. So let's get that up in there. Okay, it, it just started out with like the green. It probably much more so like this leaf here. And, and it stayed green. And some of the leaves came out lighter, but you didn't get, you know, that that minty type experience. The the texture in the veining, and not even the veining, just like the uh, the texture. It's not even texture. I don't know what to call it. The coloration of the pattern, uh, the color vari variation in the leaf, it didn't have that. And so I, I don't know. I for one think that they are not the same thing. That you'll hear that there's others that will say, nope, the Florida Ghost and the Florida Ghost Mint, they're the same plant. I don't know. I think they're not. That's just my perspective. And I think there's nothing wrong with having your own perspective. <clears throat> so let's uh, get into the next one. Opening quickly. Do, do, do. Oh, huh, interesting. All right. So this one got an Amadrium silver here. And that's in really good condition. That looks really good. I'm kind of wondering what that is, though. Nope. Let's see. Doesn't look like that's anything. No. Okay. Good there. But yeah. Really good condition of medium silver. Um, and that's another thing too. Let me point this out because this is also something that should be mentioned. Is when the plant first arrives, until it's reacclimated, until it's um, had the opportunity to come back to life, if you will, this is the best these plants are going to look. And... This might be the best these plants are ever going to look, depending on how well they reacclimate. But that's that's the problem with buying a plant from somebody that flips it in 24, 48, or even 72 hours, you know, or even longer. But for the most part, plant flippers usually will try to flip the plant within that quick turnaround time frame because of the fact that that's the best that plant is going to look. Um, so you have to be very, very careful with that. And that kind of ties back to why it's important to really buy from a reputable individual that is not going to do that to you. And let's see. I want to say this is a dark lord. I could be wrong though. I think this is a, a baby dark lord, but if it's not, I'll put what it actually is in the chat. But look at the red back on that. And again, I don't I don't know what these roots look like. And that's that's where that's where the difference maker always is going to be at. Alright, looks like this is gonna be another medium silver. Okay. 
and it is another good looking one i like this plant i like it because of a few things like look at the texture on the roots or not the roots excuse me on the leaf and then also look at the fenestration you know i like the fenestration on it and i just i like the way it has that monstera-esque feel almost like a cross between a monstera and a monstera peru uh but it's it's different you know it's i don't know i just i like it because of that This looks like a, some stowaway seeds of some sort. I wonder if those are stowaway seeds. Let's, let's see. Let's go over here. Interesting. I have not seen that before where it's like just those look like seeds. I mean, they don't look like seeds that are going to live, but. <clears throat> Interesting. I don't know. All right. Let's see what else we got. Oh, I almost tore a leaf. Slow down. A little bit of the sniffle still. So, um, still getting over my cold. But nothing serious. Oh, this is a good looking one, too. So, we got another Florida ghost here. Looking very good. Nice and healthy. Leaves are in great condition. Very nice packing job. Very impressed with that. This is a big whatever it is. The package is kind of damp too. I think I really like that because it helps keep the humidity level up as it's traveling. And so it's something that I've, I've, I'm noticing that this is definitively more damp than other orders I have received in the past. And so I can certainly appreciate that. Oh, this. Huh. I'm going to be honest, I'm not exactly 100% sure what this is. I want to say, I don't know, it's not a glorious. Splendid. It's probably a splendid. Okay, I'm thinking this is a splendid. If it's not a splendid, I will update it, but that's it's actually a really good size, and the leaves look really good. I hope this makes it. This is a pretty plant. Look at the red on the back. Look at that. That's pretty. Yeah, I hope that makes it. And man, that is, that's like really nice and velvety. This is the first time I've had a splendid. And so that's why I was kind of thrown back as to what it was at first. But that's a, that's a good looking plant. Let's, uh, let's see. All right. But just to share a couple things with you so that I'm not just opening up the plant and not talking at the same time. Uh, one of the first things that I'm probably going to do, and this one, this is probably the worst looking one yet, actually, as far as like, got a melted leaf on there, but not, I mean, it's nothing terrible, and it's one of the older leaves, and so it, odds are that it would probably die off anyways, but I'm just just calling attention to it because it is the first one that I've seen where it's kind of got that going on. And this looks like a younger one because some of these don't have the full. Um, I don't know what you would call these. Is there? I don't know. I'll have to look that up or figure it out. If you, in fact, if you know what these little arms on the uh, Florida Ghost are called, or this portion of the leaf is called. Uh, drop it in the chat educate me help me out but um gosh now where was i going with my conversation before i even saw that oh yeah process all right so as i'm unboxing these let's talk about um what's next in store for them what's the next step so 
the next step is going to be to get them fully unwrapped, meaning roots and all, because obviously right now as I'm on camera, I'm not unwrapping the roots, but I want to get them fully unwrapped, get the roots out, get the roots exposed, kind of have a good idea of what I'm looking at in terms of what the long-term health perspective is going to be of the plant. And then I'm going to get it into some water and I'll probably put in a little bit of rooting solution, but not very much. I mean, like just a little bit. And honestly, I hear that, um, using vitamin B is the best way to go, but I don't have any vitamin B here with me today. And so I'm not going to do that, but I'm just a little bit. And the reason you don't want to use a lot of fertilizer or a lot of, um, uh, solution or nutrient solution is because your plants are stressed out. They're going through a lot. They've been through a lot and the the root system is honestly not very strong and it needs to rejuvenate and so i like rooting solution because it's going to help it rejuvenate but i don't want to give it so much that it's going to burn up the root system uh, and so that's going to be the next step and then obviously we're going to get them in the grow tent and just let them sit there and suck up all that 90 percent humidity and just rejuvenate and come back to life. So the way this one was folded is not so great. And it's, it's lost a lot of its color, but um, we'll get the pink back in it. We'll, we'll get it back. But that's, that's a fun one. I, I, I like this one. Some come in like super pink and then some come in and it's like mm, pink. And in some, they, once they get here, like the original leaves, they stay kind of this color, but the new leaves that come in, um, they show up as being really pink. And so it'll be interesting to see where on the spectrum that one lands. That's another thing too. When you're buying local versus buying um, from overseas, you know what you're going to get. And there's a couple things about that. That's weird. That was a mosquito of sorts. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but you're you're gonna know what you're going to get. Uh, you see the plant firsthand. You get to pick out the plant. You get to select which one is going to be the best for you, and you don't have to worry about it. it. And even from like a reputable source, oh, this is very nice. Um, even from like a reputable source, they might not be a hundred percent honest and I've, I've talked about that so like with my redundant dark form I bought one plant and received what I thought was a different plant I even kind of had some engagement with them and interacted about it and what it really boiled down to was me saying you know what you need to change your picture because your picture is very misleading because that's not what I expected to get and they're like okay yeah you're probably right yeah, I was definitely right because that was not what I expected. But after looking at all the other plants or looking at other pictures of that plant in other sources, I was like, okay, that is what it is. But that's not what I thought I was getting because that's not what I saw in the picture that I saw. But I didn't have experience with that particular plant at the time. And so, you know, it just, I took face value for what they had. Now, I am going to show you something that I, I hope this baby lives because this is pretty... <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Well done. Well done on that. Especially like right here. Oh, please stay. Please stay. Yeah. It's a baby though. And I'm scared to look at that root system. But man. Yes. Oh. Take that all day. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. Okay. Um, what's the next topic? I guess we could talk a little bit about being careful. Um, the addiction of the plant hobby. You could very easily uh, end up overspending. Um, and, and you'd probably have the chance of getting good plants. Uh, but sometimes you might be just not really 
and this is a painted lady and that last one was a ppp or pink princess philodendron philodendron pink princess if you will um but yeah it you can get you can get caught up in it like um even even for us even though our objective was to launch a store we had to be very careful about not just not buying more than what we could really afford because um importers some of them can be very persuasive and sometimes they can you know try and talk you into doing more than what you can really do and and obviously you know until the money's sent you can always say no but you have to you have to kind of keep that in mind don't don't spend what you can't afford to buy because then you have that that obligation or that feeling of man now that I've committed I have to do this um, yeah don't get sucked into that and a lot of them can be very persuasive and a lot of them can be very um, I don't want to say aggressive but very very forward in their tactics and their efforts to get you to buy from them like they'll even sometimes be like oh man I'm so sad you, it's it's gonna ruin my life that you're not buying from me and and don't fall for that that's that's not fair it's not fair to you it's not fair to the industry um so yeah just yeah i'll just i'll leave that right there because i just wanted to make sure that i shared that with you um standalania aria that that is going to make somebody very happy this one leaf looks like it's gonna have some issues but it'll be okay yeah, that's pretty. So I'm very impressed with the quality so far. I'm, um, <clears throat> and just to be very clear, these are plants we're buying in order to reacclimate. They're going to go into the store. They're going to be going up for sale. Uh, I don't think that uh, we're going to be keeping very many of these. And if we do keep it, we're going to keep it in order for it to be a mother plant so we can grow it out for the purpose of selling. There might be one or two in here for personal enjoyment, but... Um, that's that's why we were able to buy such a large quantity of plants is because this isn't necessarily just for us this is really for you so, um, so just a disclaimer from that perspective for perspective all right what is next on here and this is kind of fun I didn't really look at the the list and it's been a while since we had seen the plants um, obviously in pictures and videos and stuff like that while going through the selection but um, it's kind of like a fun game of not knowing what you're going to get even though you kind of know what you're gonna get So this one is going to be another Splendid. That's a baby too. This is definitely the newest leaf. And it looks like that hasn't even hardened off yet. And in fact, a lot of these panels look like that. I have to maybe do a little bit more homework on the Splendid because I am sure that this being the newest leaf is not going to hold that color and it's going to turn dark green and I can't remember what the cross is between the Splendid but it, if I were to look at it it really kind of looks like a cross between a Glorious and a El Chaco but I don't know I mean I'll, I'll put in here maybe like right here or right here what the cross of the Splendid is for those of you that don't know but um, it's just it's just what it looks like What do we have now? Let's see. Okay, this one is going to be another Florida ghost. Less leaves on this one, so there's only got two leaves actually. But 
it is a lot more mature. So pretty good size. A little bit of creasing on that in packing process, but it's not bad. It's a good looking one. It's a nice one. We'll be right back. I gotta take a look at something. Okay, so we're back. Um, full transparency. I have no idea what we've been, what I was just talking about, and so we're just gonna kind of roll with it. Uh, I'm trying to think about what it was, but I just do not recall. So let's just get into this next plant here. And once again, I almost tore another leaf. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Let's see. Just about got it here. Okay, so this is another pink splash. And this one's got a lot less pink in it. But it's also probably in part due to traveling conditions and everything that it's gone through from a stress perspective. Uh, the pink will probably come back once we get it uh, acclimated and happy again. Okay, I think we are down to the last one. Let's see. Yes, indeed. So, <clears throat> what an exciting process. This is this is fun. Stress pays off sometimes. And in this case, I'm going to say that it did. Okay, looks like this is another Dark Lord. And again, once again, if I am wrong, I will update it in the description as to what this is. But that looks good. Okay. So, and, and actually, the stressful part begins right now. You know, We've got um, some beautiful looking plants. They certainly did their part in terms of packing it well and securing it in some really nice packaging. Maybe we'll just kind of, let's see, go down here like this. So they used styrofoam in the enclosure. Did a really good job, but that's that's one of the reasons why, I don't want this to go back where it's supposed to, it's one of the reasons why they are one of the suppliers we have chosen to work with. Um, they do a good job, and so we certainly appreciate that. Um, so on that note, I'm, I'm just going to say thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you'll leave some comments in the description below or in the comment section down below as to if this is some type of content that you'd like to see me continue. Um, I like doing the rare plant talks, and... I think that as we go forward, they'll probably be a little bit better from a perspective of us sharing what we're learning from the plant perspective. And then maybe even some updates on some plants that I've previously talked about. I know that I've wanted to do that. Uh, but in the meantime, just want to say thank you. This has been a, an exciting ride. We are very close to the store opening. And those of you that are local, definitely check out Armstrong Airways and uh, we'll kind of go from there if there's anything that uh, you would like to hear about or some content that you would like for me to talk on please also you know throw that down in the comments uh, and last thing is just as always you know like and subscribe i think the more that you like my content two things happen one is it, it encourages me to write more not write i mean because clearly there's no script here but to share more with you um, but at the same time, if as you click that like button, I think that there's an algorithm that triggers more people to be able to see it. And it's not like the millionth video down the road in terms of the topic that you're searching for. So yeah, until next time, super appreciate it. This is Teray Armstrong Aeroids LLC, Rare Plant Talk with Teray, our first unboxing. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>